This is Danielle's statement that she made today at her sentencing. Your Honor, it is due to my actions and choices that led to my five-year-old son, Elijah's death. All the agony that my son encountered, neglect, mistreatment, isolate, is, sorry, isolation and malnourishment was horrible. No child should ever have to go through any, and in particular, that kind of abuse, especially my son that I worked, especially my son that I have, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Especially my son that I worked so hard to find when his father took him away from me. I have all people should know because that's what happened to me in many similar ways. I also was neglected, mistreated, isolated, and malnourished by my parents and their partners. And I'm so lucky to be alive. I was also sexually abused by people who were supposed to, supposed to protect me. Even so, Elijah never deserved any of the abuse. Parents are supposed to take care of their child, their children. I don't deserve my abuse either. I was lucky that I had some time in foster care with wonderful people who gave me a glimpse of better roles model glimpse of better role modeling. If I could have remained with them, I truly feel like my life could have gone in a better direction because I saw a life that I had never had known. Sorry, hold on your Let me go back. I truly feel like life could have gone in another direction before I saw a life that I had never known. Even with Elijah's behavioral issues, his death should never have happened, and I wish that I could have gone back, got, have, could have done better and take it all back. I didn't know how to make better decisions at the time. When Elijah was dropped off with me by his father unexpectedly, I hadn't seen Elijah since he was one year old. Even though I tried to find him for a long time, when his father dropped him off with me for what was supposed to be a couple of months, couple of months, he didn't tell me the issues that he had been experienced with Elijah. I tried getting Elijah, but he was with. I tried getting Elijah help, but it was impossible because of all these obstacles in my path. His father, Timothy Lewis, wouldn't give me his insurance information to get him services. I brought him to the, the emergency room at the Elliott Hospital because he was getting he was eating feces and I didn't know what to do. I told the hospital about it. What was, I told the hospital what it was about. I'm sorry. I told the hospital about what was happening. They fed him snacks and they discharged him without any advice to me and about what to do in the future. Me and Joseph's staff picked him up the next morning. I didn't feel like the Elliott Hospital helped me with what I needed to understand about how to help Elijah with what was going on with him. DCYF was, was involved at the time. When they learned about the Elliott Hospital emergency room visit, when I was trying to help Elijah, I told him that Elijah needed to be put in foster care because I didn't know how to help him. They told me that I was a bad mother for suggesting it. I know even then that Elijah needed help and I couldn't provide him. The only person in my life that I could turn to advice was my sister. Never do this with an older dog. When is a dog old? A dog's body. Tracy made a plan for my sister to adopt Elijah. I don't know how to deal with Elijah's behavior. I hear his issues and I didn't have. Sorry, Your Honor. I did not have 
the financial resources to give him the medical or psychiatric care that he clearly needed because his father wouldn't give me his insurance information. At this point, I was pregnant, also caring for one and a half year old. <laughs> And his father, who had raised him for three years, was unwilling to take him back. Me and him communicating back and forth, but Elijah did not. Elijah's dad did not send the necessary paperwork to my sister in time to make this happen. I did not know what to do. I was also deep in my addiction, not making great choices. <laughs> Such as not contacting these who up to get the help Elijah needed because I was afraid that my daughter and my unborn baby was. I can't do it. May I take over your Yes, go right ahead of screen. I'm, I'm going to go to the back paragraph just because I think a lot of that was lost. The only person in my life that I could turn to for advice was my sister Tracy for help. Tim Lewis, Elijah's dad, Tracy and me, made a plan for my sister to adopt Elijah. I didn't know how to deal with Elijah's behavioral issues, and I did not have the financial resources to get him the medical or psychiatric care that he clearly needed because his father would not give me his insurance information. At that point in time, I was pregnant, also caring for a one and a half year old, and his father, who had raised him for three years, was unwilling to take him back. Me and him communicated back and forth, but Elijah's dad did not send the necessary paperwork to my sister in time to make this happen. I didn't know what to do. I was also deep into my addiction and not making great choices, such as not contacting DCYF to get the help that Elijah needed because I was afraid that my daughter and my unborn baby would also be taken from me. That's how my parents handled it with avoiding contact with DCF in my home state. Looking back now, I should have reached out to DCF, but I felt such shame about myself that I couldn't figure out how to help him. Every day, I think about what if I had only been able to find the strength and the ability to do so. Elijah would still be alive and safe today. If I had contacted DCYF, I would have been able to be on a path to bettering my life and his getting out of my toxic relationship with Joe, and then working on getting all of my kids back, including Elijah, through sobriety and therapy. But I chose not to because I was so broken at the time, using drugs and felt such shame because of my Elliott Hospital experience. When Elijah passed away, I know that it looked like I didn't care or had remorse. I did, but I was dealing with so much at that time that my judgment was extremely overwhelmed by my own trauma and untreated mental health issues. I was, on preg I was pregnant and on bed rest and I was still using drugs. <laughs> I've been sober for three years. I will live with the guilt and sadness that I participated in allowing my son to die. There will never be a day in my life when I will not feel shame and remorse about it. I wish that I could have made better choices. But now that you know about my upbringing, I hope you know that you understand that the people in my life who were supposed to protect me also failed me and gave me very awful examples of how a parent is supposed to behave. These people were my role models. Even so, I want the court to know that I'm truly remorseful for what I, for what I did. I always dreamed about having a family and making a safe home for them in a way that I never had. I had really wanted and hoped to do better than my parents did for me. I also want to say that I am sorry to those that I let down, but most of all, to the one person who can't hear me ever again. I'm so sorry, Elijah, that I failed you as your mother. I love you.